Hi, this is Sergeet and welcome to another episode of the Rizal Lectures. Today I am here in Calamba, Laguna and behind me is the church where Dr. Jose Rizal was baptized. To begin this episode, let me share to you a trivia. Do you know that the parish priest of this church, Father Leoncio Lopez, was related to the Rizal family? How did that happen? Father Leoncio Lopez was a Mexican assigned here in the Philippines. He had a son, and that son got married to one of Rizal's sisters. So that son is Rizal's bayaw, or brother-in-law. Another trivia is that Father Leoncio Lopez was very, very kind to Rizal. And in fact, Rizal made him into one of the characters in his El Filibusterismo. He is none other than Padre Florentino, the kindest priest of them all. Now, let's begin our lecture. Today, we will have a simple analysis of Rizal's second novel, The El Filibusterismo, or El Fili or Fili for short. Let us begin with the title. El Filibusterismo is a Spanish term. El means the, filibustero means a person who is a troublemaker. Filibusterismo is the act of the troublemaker or the filibuster. Therefore, el filibusterismo literally means the actions of the troublemaker. In the novel, the lead character is Simon. He is the troublemaker. He is the filibustero. However, in the first English translation of the el filibusterismo, the title became Reign of the Greed. An American translator gave that title. Maybe he saw the greed of Simon or, or the greed of the Spaniards in the novel. That's why he gave such a title to the English translation. Now we will analyze the novel by going through nine themes. Basically, Rizal explained how life was in his time in this novel through the following themes. The first one is the symbolism of the Barcong Tabo. In the Spanish language, the V is pronounced as a B. So, Tavo is pronounced Tabo. Another name for the Bapur Tabo is Bacha, spelled as Batea, but it's pronounced as Bacha. That is the name of the ferry boat carrying Simon and the other characters of the novel in chapter 1. The Bapur Tabo travels across Laguna de Bay from Manila to the town of San Diego, which is probably Calamba. This ferry boat is very slow and it symbolizes the very slow progress in the Philippines under the Spanish administration. Why is the Tabo very slow? Because of its shape. Modern ferry boats are shaped like a bullet if you look at it on a top view. But the Bapur Tabo is rounded or oval and it cannot travel very fast. Have you tried riding on a salvabida while swimming in a pool? The salvabida usually is the interior of a tire and if you sit on it and try to paddle with your hands, you cannot go on a straight line. You will just go round and round in circles. Same thing with the Baportabo. The problem with Philippine society during Rizal's time was built in. It's inherent. Because of its shape, it just goes round and round in circles. So Rizal must be saying, if we want real change, we must do a very radical action. We cannot go to our desired destination with this kind of shape. Philippine colonial society is really out of shape. Now the Baportabo has two decks, the upper deck and the lower deck. The decks of the Baportabo symbolizes the social classes in the Philippines. The upper deck or the high class, that's where you find the leaders of society, the rich Filipinos, and they are having a great time in the upper deck. They have a nice view and it's very comfortable up there. Meanwhile, the lower deck represents the lower class and that's where you find the poor people. That's where you find most of the natives. They were poor and they had all the discomforts in life. They are near the engine room which is very hot and it's very stinky out there because the animals like cows and pigs 
were loaded together with them in the lower deck. Another theme in El Filibusterismo is the priests in the novel. Compared to the Noli Metangere, there were so many priests mentioned in the El Fili. This shows that there were many kinds of priests in Rizal's time. There were Spanish priests and Filipino priests. There were Spanish priests who were pro-Filipino and there were some who were anti-Filipino. There were corrupt priests as well as liberal-minded priests. Rizal wanted to say that not all priests during his time were bad. Some were good and sympathetic with the Filipinos, like Padre Florentino. As mentioned in the introduction, Padre Florentino is based on the real-life Padre Leoncio Lopez, a relative of Rizal, who was a kind priest who gave him advices and loving care when he was a child. Another theme in the novel is student life. There were many scenes showing the typical life of students in the Philippines, particularly in UST. Although UST was not specifically mentioned in the novel, but there was only one university during that time, and that was UST. A major character, Basilio, was a student in the university, and many scenes involving Basilio showed the educational system in the Philippines and the Filipino students disgust over the style of teaching and their clamor for reforms. We all know that Rizal didn't enjoy his stay in UST because he personally experienced the issues he wrote in El Fili. He expressed it through the character of Basilio. The biggest theme in El Filibusterismo is the rumors of a revolution. If the Noli was set in the 1870s, the setting of the El Fili was 13 years after the Noli Mitangere. So this must be the 1890s. The masses were very much discontented with Spanish rule and rumors of a revolution was very common in those days. This time was during the birth of the Katipunan in 1892. It shows that even before the revolution broke out in 1896, the masses were already thinking or planning of a revolution. So the time of the El Fili was the time when a revolution was very ripe to materialize because of the abuses of the Spaniards. A side story in the El Fili is the role of the Chinese. In the novel, a Chinese businessman named Quiroga helped the revolutionaries by keeping their arms in his bodega. In the real Philippine Revolution, we saw lots of Chinese aiding the Katipunan and joining them as well. This is because the Chinese were also treated badly by the Spaniards. Rizal has foreseen this way before it actually happened. He was a keen observer of Philippine society. Rizal also wrote about the role of the media in the Philippines. In the novel, Rizal created the character Ben Zaib to represent the media in his time. During that time, we don't have radio and TV yet, so the only form of media then was the print media or the newspapers. And during the Spanish times, the newspapers were blind to the truth. The journalists see the abuses of the government and the church, but they don't want to write about them. And so Rizal vented his frustration on the media through his novel El Filibusterismo. Towards the end of the novel, Rizal resurrected the issue of his frustrated love for Leonor Rivera. This time, he put the character of Leonor in Paulita and himself in Isagani. And who is Juanito Pelaez? He must be Henry Keeping, the foreigner who was arranged by Leonor's mother to be married to Rizal's girlfriend. Rizal can't get over the fact that he has already lost Leonor to a foreigner and so he probably used the novel as an outlet for his disappointment. In the story, Paulita was pledged to be married to Juanito Pelaez and Isagani went roaming the streets of Manila very much disillusioned because he lost the love of his life. Another theme that we can talk about is Rizal's view on the revolution. We can see this in the failure of the assassination plot in Capitan Chago's house. Simon wanted to blow up the house together with all the Spanish leaders and the Filipino elite attending the wedding party there. But the plan got frustrated because Isagani threw the bomb that was supposed to blow up the house. He threw it out into the river. In this scene, Rizal wanted to say that he doesn't believe that the revolution is the solution to society's problems. 
Now, at the very end of the novel, Simon, being hunted by the Spanish officials, drank poison. And as he was dying, he confessed to Padre Florentino who he really was and his plan to stage a revolution. The revolution would begin with the blowing up of the house of Capitan Chago and then the rebels that he recruited would come down the hills and wipe out the remaining Spaniards in Manila and in the Philippines. And in that scene, Padre Florentino challenged the youth by saying this line, Nasaan ang mga kabataan na handang mamatay para maghugas ng maraming kasalanan? Hinihintay namin kayo. This shows results hope on the youth that they would participate in creating change in Philippine society. He said he is waiting for the youth to act. They are next in line. And it's kind of mysterious that Rizal mentioned bloodshed as part of the action of the youth. He says the youth must be ready to die and shed their blood so that the sins or the abuses of the Spaniards will be washed away or will be gone forever in Philippine society. Now this leads us to the age-old question, was Rizal pro-revolution? Maybe no, because in the story, Simon died and the revolution never materialized. We can also say yes, because he incited the youth to rise up and shed blood for the country. But I guess it's immaterial whether Rizal was pro-revolution or anti-revolution because the effect of his novel, El Filibusterismo, was so great. It changed Philippine society inside out. The Philippine Revolution was hatched because of his novels, Noli Metangere and El Filibusterismo. These novels were read by Andres Bonifacio and it inspired him to establish the Katipunan. And what happened next was history. To end this episode, we have a postlude. I have here 10 trivias about the El Filibusterismo. Number 1. Rizal started writing the El Filibusterismo in Calamba during his first homecoming in 1887. And it was published in Kant, Belgium because the cost of printing was cheaper there than in Brussels. Brussels is the capital of Belgium. It took him a long time to finish the novel. He has traveled to many countries and he brought along his draft and scribbled some chapters on it every now and then until he finished it around two years later. Number two, Rizal pawned his jewels just to begin the printing of the novel. And number three, Valentin Ventura loaned Rizal some cash to complete the printing. So Rizal was really cash strapped during those times and he needed a savior to pay for the printing of his novel. For Danoli, his savior was Maximo Viola and in the Philly it was Valentin Ventura. So Rizal gave the original manuscript, the handwritten version of the El Philly to Valentin Ventura. It was later bought by the Philippine government from Mr. Ventura and today we can find that original El Filibusterismo handwritten version in the National Library. And if we look at that original manuscript, we will easily notice that it has a lot of erasures. Rizal must be fickle-minded as he wrote that novel. Another trivia is that the foreword and the warning were not included in the final copy to save on printing cost. We can only find the foreword and the warning in the handwritten version. Number seven, we know that the novel was dedicated to the Gomburza. We can see the images of the three priests on the cover of the novel. Do you know that many copies of the El Filibusterismo was confiscated in Hong Kong? Very, very few copies were able to reach Philippine shores. The friars in the Philippines told the friars in Hong Kong to block the shipment of the novel in the Philippines. And right there in Hong Kong, the bulk of the delivery was burned but a few copies were successfully smuggled into the country. Number nine, many people praised the novel. A Spanish newspaper, El Nuevo Regimen, even serialized it, or they published the novel part by part until it got completed. Now, this was in Spain, where people were open-minded and they didn't see the El Filibusterismo as a subversive material. 
And last but not the least, we have here a very interesting story about the El Filibusterismo. Do you know that in the 1960s, the original copy of the Noli and the Fili were stolen from the National Museum? The thieves asked the government for millions as ransom. They made anonymous phone calls to authorities demanding the price that they wanted. The government refused to pay the ransom money and the price was lowered in the next days. But still the government would not bite until one day the novels were returned for nothing. No one was arrested, no suspect was identified, and thus we have the original manuscripts of the Noli and the Fili back in the National Museum. So that ends the lecture for today. I hope you learned many things. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye and thank you.